we're back with episode four of Icopod. I'm Bob Collin Jr. and joining me as always, Austin Skinner. The best there is, the best there was, and the best there ever will be. That's a I put a TM in there. That's a trademark. <coughs> I'm not paying for that. Come on. No. Okay. Yeah, I don't have the money for that. Spot me, dude. No, I can't. Whatever. I'll get with Repo Man. Maybe we can repossess something and we'll pay. The trademark. Off. Yeah. Yeah. Repossess the trademark. Oh hey. my god, and then we'll own it. Hello. Hmm. You're the brains of this operation, I tell you. Anyway, uh, thank you for joining us again. Uh, as noted in episode three, you can email us at icopodcast at gmail.com to share your thoughts on the action, and we'll read them on the air. Do it. Do it. All right. Don't beg. Just let it naturally happen. All right. That's okay. Sorry. You messed up once with the trademark Sorry. thing. Sorry. Okay. You can also find us on Facebook at icopod. No spaces. Austin. Keep bringing that up. I'm just saying. Keep it up. I'm just. I'm going to put four spaces in between every letter. You're going to go and edit it? So yeah. they can never find it again. Thanks. Appreciate it. You're just going to change it like, fuck you, Bob. And then they'll be like, where's Icopod? Oh, it's under fuck you, Bob. Yeah, that'll shoot up the listeners, pal. Wouldn't that be funny? Like a million viewers? Yeah. Of li- of listeners? Let's, let's hear it. We're also on iTunes. So we you are. can we download are. it on there if you want to be mobile. I know you. I guess you can be mobile really on anything. You can download it off Podbean or whatever iTunes, from what I hear and what I understand, is a little bit more convenient, but that's neither here or there. I am, yeah, I have no idea. I'm totally ignorant on this. I just record a wrestling podcast and put it out there. Sure. So whatever. I okay. don't care how people listen to it. Sure. I mean, I do care. I want you to listen, but how Through you go a about cup and string, hopefully. Sure. Yeah. Or if you don't, we should sell tickets and we can get people in my living room. I that would get over huge. Make a couple of bucks. That'd be yeah. pretty good. Yeah. Um, and as noted, this will be just one episode of Raw. I'm going to stop mentioning that after this one, I think. I think people will get the hint. No, they'll get the hint after that, I think. So we're back here. Uh, We finished January 93 Mm -hmm. for this project. Kind of a rough month. I would say so. A transitional month for sure. Yes. So coming out of January, I got some notes. Oh, boy. As per usual. Sure. Um, Unfortunately, it starts off with kind of a sad one here. Andre the Giant has passed away. He passed away on January 27th of an apparent heart attack. And see, you know what? I always thought for Andre it was later. I thought it was earlier. You did? I thought it was before the first episode arrived. I thought it was like 95. Oh, no. Yeah. No, I knew I knew it was around this time, 93, but I, I for some reason I thought it was like the first episode. Oh, that's weird. Uh, yeah, he passed away of, a, of an apparent heart attack in his sleep. Oh. Uh, any memories? I know I usually just go through all the notes, but do you have any memories of uh, Andre? Greatest... You know, big guy, most iconic big guy probably of all time. Biggest attraction. Biggest attraction. Um, Sold a bunch of tickets everywhere he went. And even though he might have not been the best in ring, I think he's one of the best storytellers in the ring. From, you know, a a fan standpoint, I would say. Yeah, I agree. Um, In hindsight, you know, since the WrestleMania 3 match between Andre and Hogan, I never knew or realized that a lot of people hate the match. Really? Yeah. But as a kid, if I rented a tape or you know, WrestleMania three or whatever right. it was, I enjoyed it. Well, and that's the match. Andre oh, yeah. is remembered for that match. It's a great angle. Absolutely. And they and they milk that for two years, I think. Two years, Bob? No way, eighty seven. It's, it's twenty eighteen. And that's still in the opening baggage. Well, no, I meant like <laughs> doing Andre Hogan but matches. It's yeah, yeah, like two right, years, because yeah. eighty seven. They knew it made money, so they kept doing it. Yeah. Um I I I personally enjoyed it. Me too. Yeah, maybe Me I'm too. crazy. I think I really wish we would have been able to get a little bit more from Andre before he re- like his health really rapidly started declining. Um, so that's kind of tragic and unfortunate because I think maybe going into the mid nineties, it would have been pretty interesting to see Andre the Giant, 94, I think. Where would he fit? I don't even know. That's a great question. You know? Maybe Andre Giant Gonzalez. Hey, you want to sell some tickets? That probably would. That, I mean, I'm kind of joking, but... It would. How do I would tune in for that. No, Even if I knew it was an awful match. Right. Then, and Andre better Giant. be going over. I would hope. Good Lord. Unless yeah. they want to make Giant Gonzalez like their next Andre or something. But. No, I don't think so. I, I, that just gave me a real like depression, just yeah, thinking of that for Andre. I know. Um, other news: Ric Flair has officially signed his WWE contract and will start at Super Brawl. 
Yeah, there you go. He didn't wait long. He did not. So as mentioned before, Nature Boy will not be on Icopod for a while. Yeah. The crush uh, doink angle has been toned down significantly right. on television due to bad press it has received in New York. Really? Yes. Huh. And I've noticed because they don't really mention concussion anymore. Well, right. And Crush, I think, specifically, has been really reeled in. Like We we haven't seen Crush at all while well, playing up to the angle. But I don't know. Maybe they're losing a little bit of hope with Crush. Kind of trying something else with Doink. Yeah, maybe. I, I think they're trying to get people to forget about it. And then when Crush right. comes back, they're like, oh, yeah, right. Kona Crush. Right. But I did, I did notice that it was... They're just kind of like what you know, going Absolutely, under yeah. the rug with it. Yeah, like, oh yeah, even, you use a lead arm. Even whatever. like getting into this episode, it's like that stuff never even happened. Like they yeah. don't even mention nothing. I mean, you get we'll get there, but like a tidbit of it. Yes, but Doink is definitely in a different direction. Yes, I I agree with that. Uh, on January twenty sixth, Vince McMahon uh, held a press conference in Fresno, California, to anen- announce that Tenru will be competing at WrestleMania nine. This is a working agreement with War. Well, that's his promotion. Right. Um, Wrestling and Romance, famous for booking guys like Jericho, Ultimo Dragon, um, Rey Mysterio Jr., who was very young, um, and actually War in New Japan at this time had a pretty decent working relationship. War was relatively new. They're booking Rey Mysterio Jr. in 93? Well... Was he 12? Well, no. But they're famous for booking him. They were one of the first, well, really the only Japanese companies to book him. Okay. Um, but yes, that kind of gives you an idea because, so that's pretty huge because WWF in New Japan had had a relationship previously with Tiger Mask and stuff like that. So it's almost like an indirect kind of partnership. So it makes sense to me that War is working with them here. Okay. The next day, the uh, WWF has another press conference in which they announce matches for WrestleMania 9, mm. which includes Hart Yoko, sure. Luger Perfect, Gonzalez Taker, and at the press conference, Bret Hart decides to take a little cheap shot really? at the departing Ric Flair by calling him overrated. Wow. Coming from Bret Hart? Yeah, and it, you know oh, that kind of surprises shit. me because the last two months, they've been having house show matches. Right. That are ranging from Getting okay, yeah, yeah. okay yeah. to amazing. Right. So that was a little right. interesting to me. Uh, recently on television, they had been promoting the Madison Square Garden show. I don't know if you noticed. Okay. So okay. I have the card here, and the, oh, I guess the results, I should say. And I want to know what uh, what you thought of, or what you would think about this show, potentially. Belt them out, Bob. All right, so the show took place on January 29th, which was a Friday, if I'm doing my calculations right. Okay. So apparently, uh, this is not an order. I, t- I got this from the history of WWE.com. So it's just in general, like, yeah, this just, is what happened. I, don't, okay. I mean, normally it's in order, but I don't, I don't think this is in order. Okay. Uh, Tito Santano pinned Skinner in 8 minutes and 38 seconds with a flying forearm. Wow, 8 minutes. Yeah. House shows these days, back then, you'd have some matches go, take Oof. a little while. Yeah, that's rough. Guarantee a lot of stalling in Especially that. Especially that opener? Wow. If it's the opener. If it's the opener. I don't know if it's, yeah, the, if it's the opener. Uh, from there we go, Randy Savage pinning one half of the WWF World Tag Team Champions, Ted DiBiase, at the 14-minute mark with a DDT. Holy cow. Hey, I want, to, I want that on Raw. Right, yeah, I, I watched that. Yeah, that's a good match. Yeah. Uh, speaking of good matches, I'd even say great matches. Tatanka pins Damian Demento in nine minutes and two seconds with a tomahawk chop. So I was just reading that on your notes as you were saying it, and it was just pissing me off every word you got through, and the fact that you built it up with it being a great match. That's it. I'm two, done. Two, I'm done, Bob. two legends. My favorite wrestlers. This is a dream match. I wonder if we'll ever see it on Raw. If we do, that's it. All right. You'll quit? I, I'm putting in my two weeks. All right. So you can email podcast <laughs> at gmail.com if you would be interested in being a future co-host. We're, yeah, we're looking for a co-host right now. Some Because one of us are yeah, just going to quit. Some <laughs> assholes talking about quitting already, episode four. Uh, so just let Bob know. Just let me know. Yeah. I won't invite you over anymore to do this. All right. Uh, WWF World Champion Bret Hart pins Bam Bam Bigelow at 11.42 with a victory roll after Bigelow was kicked in the corner. Really? Yeah. That's weird. That's a weird... Well, I guess it kind of keeps Bigelow strong. Avoid having to tap out or anything. I guess. Um, Mr. Perfect beats Ric Flair by disqualification at 17 minutes when Razor Ramon gets involved. 
Heenan was sent to the backstage during the match by Sergeant Slaughter because Heenan gave Flair brass knuckles, I'm assuming similar to what he did on Raw. Probably, yeah. Kind of interesting that they went the DQ route here. Yeah. We think you just get the clean win yeah. at the Garden. Right. This would prove to be Flair's last MSG appearance for more than nine years. Wow, that's crazy to me. And this was Perfect's return to the Garden in right. an in-ring capacity sure. for the first time since SummerSlam 91. Oh, that's huge too. I would say so, yeah. Uh, the Head Shrinkers, they defeated the legendary tag team of Virgil and Jim Powers. Oh, dear God. Jim Powers was substituting for Jim Duggan. What is going on with Jim Duggan? I don't know. He's just not showing he's, up yeah, for Yeah, he's appear- missing appearances. Maybe he's having like a midlife crisis or something. He doesn't have any know. self-confidence. I don't know. He'll come out with like a bottle of Jack. Instead of the two by four? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I just don't have confidence in myself. I'm drunk. <laughs> That match goes six minutes and 20 seconds when Powers was pinned. I'm assuming with a splash off the top. What do you think of the Head Shrinkers? I like the Head Shrinkers. So do I. I do. So do I. They're, they're good big guys. They move around very well. Exactly. Yeah. This was the Head Shrinkers MSG debut. Nice, well. nice. Following that, we have Typhoon. He pinned the Berserker at six minutes with a splash. Now, I'm surprised that Berserker laid down for that. I'm surprised that they didn't have it go the other way. Is he not being built, like built up? I don't think either one have have been. Huh. Okay. I mean, I I haven't watched the syndicated shows right. for this, right. so I don't. I know. I mean, the syndicated stuff is usually just notes of what I what I mm-hmm. read. So, mm-hmm. uh, Razor Ramon pinned the big boss man with a roll up after Ramon moved uh, in the corner when boss man charged towards him. A roll up. Yeah. Boo. I remember watching a Coliseum video match with these guys, and it's like the same finish. So, really? Yeah. Uh. The Undertaker, he was in action, and he pinned the other half of the World Tag Team Champions, IRS, after four minutes and 30 seconds with the Tombstone. I would like to see that on Raw. Yeah, why not? Yeah. Two big names, you know? Yeah. IRS losing the Taker doesn't hurt him. Right. St- uh, Steiner Brothers, they get a Royal Rumble rematch here against the Beverly Brothers as it goes 10 minutes. Scott pins Blake with the freaking Steiner, and this is the Steiner Brothers Madison Square Garden debut. It's probably more, you know, kind of the same of a Royal Rumble replay. I would assume. Yeah. I enjoyed that match, so that was probably a good, a well, good undercard match. Well. And what is being perceived here as the main event, but I doubt it was. I could be wrong. Bob Backlund, the Royal Rumble hero, got himself over... You're shaking your head no. I I was digging it. He defeated Shawn Michaels, the Intercontinental Champion, for the belt. That's a lie. I'm kidding. He defeated Shawn Michaels by countout. I almost just said, Bob, fuck you. They went They went 18 minutes. Just because you want Bob to have the belt in an 18-minute match. With Let's go, Bob. Oh, my God. He deserves way more credit for his ability to get himself over. Poor Shawn. Poor Sean. Poor Sean. Whatever. You don't know Sean. I would have deserve... liked to see Undertaker, Tombstone, Bob Backlund on his neck on the outside of the ring. He right. doesn't deserve the belt. Bob does. Wrong. Sean Michaels never lasts an hour in the Royal Rumble. You got nothing. So from there, we got some uh, syndicated TV news. Okay. Well, did you think that MSG show, was that interesting to you, I should say, or no? I, w- I would have gone to that. Oh, me too. Okay. Yeah, I think I would have gone. Yeah. Yeah, and it, I mean, I watched it years ago, and guess what? I reviewed it for WrestlingRecaps.com. Cheap plug again. Do you remember off the top of your head whether or not you liked the show? I, I believe I did. Okay. I, I Again, it's been years. Well, on paper, I would probably go Yeah, I, I yeah. remember enjoying it. Yeah. Um, a few of the matches, though, weren't on the fan cam I have. Oh. So I think they, they really got like the main ones, though. Okay. So in that regard, it was it was pretty solid. Pretty, yeah. I, pretty good show for a house show in 93, I'd say. Yeah. From there, we got uh, syndicated news, uh, syndicated TV news. Uh, the January 30th edition of Superstars, Mr. Jim Duggan, I guess actually showed up for an interview. Yeah, what? He issued a challenge to Yokozuna in which Duggan would have to knock Yokozuna off his feet. If Duggan accomplished that, then he would simply win the match. That's it? Yes. That's all he's got to do? He doesn't need to pin him? Nothing. So what if he cracks the two by four over his head and he just falls down? He then I guess he wins. Because it doesn't tell me about disqualification. Yeah. Anymore. Sounds like a good deal to me. Yeah. I mean, I, I would just do that. Just go with the steel chair and just poop. Now, if you're Jim Duggan, you don't realize that. Like, that doesn't... Oh, happen. no. He's dumb. He'll, yeah. he'll, he'll, he'll go for a lockup or something. Sure. 
shockingly enough, the challenge was accepted. Of course. So that will be on a future edition of Superstars. Boy, that sounds like a barn burner. I kind of like the idea, to be honest with you. Oh, my God. I think, I think it could be good. Um, we heard from Luger on Superstars. He cut a promo uh, during which he said that he has heard nothing but perfect silence from Mr. Perfect in regard to a future match. That cuts pretty deep. He has really, I mean, that Royal Rumble, he was using really big words, and then now it's just like, I'm going to go real simple. Well, he's probably still got somebody writing that line for him. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, you're probably right. Yeah, Luger didn't come up with that. I don't think he would have thought of silence. He probably would have said perfect quiet. Yeah, he's been really perfectly quiet lately. Yeah. Uh, no, like silence. What um, does that mean? I don't know what that means. What does silence mean? Not a professor. <laughs> I'm not college educated. Meanwhile, uh, on Wrestling Challenge the next day on January 31st, Doink made his in-ring wrestling debut. Okay. Kind of surprised they did that on Wrestling Challenge. Yeah, why? I don't know, man. Like Raw, I would say, is well, Superstars might be the, considered the A show still. Really? I'd say so. Okay. I mean, a lot of major angles just will happen in there. Well, it seems and like they're that, taping weeks in advance. Well, because it seems like that because you'll get a ton of replays on Raw. Yes. Of, of those shows. So. Yeah, and oftentimes they would play Superstar stuff on Wrestling Challenge. Okay. So Wrestling Challenge, I think right, I think right now it goes Superstars, Raw, yeah. Wrestling Challenge yeah. is the last. Well, because they're probably trying to phase Wrestling Challenge out. Like how long? How much longer is it around? I want to say ninety five. Really, all the way up until then. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure by ninety four, yeah. that's just squashes. Right, like nothing's right, going on. Right. It's just filling okay. like obligations. Um, Marty Jannetty made his final appearance on the January thirty first wrestling challenge with Sherry Martel in his corner. Wow. So yeah, he was fired, but he's still going to wow. be on wrestling challenge. Yeah. Any, anything kind of grabbing you there? I, w- I wish, and I, I could say this every day of the week, seven days a week, I really wish Marty wouldn't have let his demons take him all the time because we probably missed out on a lot of good Marty Jannetty stuff just for that reason. I I think he's one of the more underrated guys when he's got his head on, right? Yes, yes. And, and it's a shame because... Seeing where Marty and Sherry w- would go together is interesting to me. Like, I wish we would have been able to kind of see that flesh out a little bit. Yeah. I mean, to me, the, that doesn't really catch my interest. Because once she gets associated with him, where do you go? Well, that's why I think it's interesting because with Sherry, that's a weird spot for her. Um, Has she ever, I wonder if she had ever been a face. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, that, that, definitely not in WWF. Yeah. That interests me. Because she was with. DiBiase, yeah, for or right, yeah, DiBiase first, or no, I'm sorry, Savage first, as Macho King, right, jumps to uh, DiBiase after that, and then Michaels. Didn't she? Wasn't she with the tag team in WWF? No, Harlem was... Heat when they go to WCW. Well, of course. Yeah, oh, I thought she was. With Sister tag Sherry. Team. Yeah. Can you dig it? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's all. That's all the pre-raw news I have. Okay. But before we get to Raw, February 1st, which is live from the Manhattan Center. Shocker. Yes. I have a new segment for you. Oh, boy. And it's going to be every single time that this guy appears. Oh, no. That's right. It's Tatanka. Now, you hate Tatanka. You've made it very clear that you do not like Tatanka. I don't like Tatanka. I, I like everybody... his hair. I like his hair. What? Of all the things I like, you like his, his hair. hair? I like his hair. So I've already made progress. Before this segment, even no, I've introduced... No, you didn't sell me on his hair, Bob. I liked that before. You hated him, and now before I... I do be- hate him. Not for long. Because I have a Tatanka tidbit. Oh. And I'm going to do these until, A, you like them, or B, until I run out of material. We're going to be here a long time, folks. Well, little did you know about Tatanka. He was offered a contract to play for the Miami Dolphins in the National Football League. Okay. In 1987. But Tatanka is such a badass... He was like, no, the money's not worth it because I make more as a divisional manager at Bally's Health and Fitness. Are you kidding me? I know, right? Badass. He said no to the NFL. He turned down the NFL for a manager at Bally's. Yeah. Holy shit. Health and fitness. Now that makes me think he's an idiot. This is bad. This is backfire. Yeah. How do you not take the NFL contract? Well, okay. Is he an idiot? Because one, he's not getting his head driven into the ground. Every Sunday for 26 weeks. 
Worth it. Oh, you are a son of a bitch, I tell you. Yeah, where's Bally's now? Where's the NFL now? Okay, then. Well, yeah. yeah I guess that's... Yeah. Well, where's Tatanka? He's alive. Well... He could have been dead if he was in the NFL. Oh, God. Damn, we missed out. Oh, you <laughs> son of a bitch. Oh, uh, uh, you... Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, hey. all right. <laughs> well, that was Tatanka's tidbit. Yeah. And that kind of... Shit bit. That oh, kind of... That kind of backfired on me. Bring it on, buddy. All right, it's well, not gonna happen. The next time he's on... Which I think is pretty soon after this. I'm gonna get your. It's, I'm it's telling not you, gonna I happen, can't Bob. wait. It's not gonna happen. It will. Nope. Uh, so here we go. Raw, February first, nineteen ninety three. We're live. Thank God. I love the live Raws are way better than absolutely. Using tape. We uh, right from the jump though. We go right to a match. Well, even before that, we actually start in the arena. Oh yeah. So like usually we're getting the establishing shots of New York City. All right, outside. Yeah. So we're in the arena, and then we don't even see the commentators. Before right. the first match. And you, like, past couple episodes, really from the first one, we always see the commentators to start the show to kind of establish things right into the action. I like that. I liked it. Just go right into yep, it. Yep, I liked it. And guess what the first match is? It's the dream match from the Madison oh. Square Garden show <laughs> that I was just talking about. Oh. Holy crap, we're getting it on free TV. It's Tatanka, my boy, against Damian Demento. Take it away, Austin. <sighs> First of all, Vince is, he loves Tatanka. Uh, yeah, as he should. Loves him. He's undefeated. So Tatanka comes flying out of the curtain. Vince is loving it. And I was like, okay. I was wondering where, you know, we'd see who his opponent is and maybe see, okay, maybe he's going to get a decent match here. And guess who didn't get an entrance is already standing in the ring. The guy from the outer reaches of your mind. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, talking, I wanted to go in my mind and beat the shit out of it. Talking to the, one. talking to the, to the ceiling. It's so ridiculous. So automatically, Bob. I okay. So we're what thirty seconds into this this raw. Yeah, about so a minute. I was like, damn it. This is what I have to look forward to. Like we're gonna what? get into this kind of show. <laughs> At least Damien has some momentum. Like he was in the Rumble match. Yeah, he got eliminated by the youngster Carlos Colon, but he's got some momentum. He's been on TV for a while. That's enough. He's had a couple of wins. That's enough out of you. I'm trying real hard. Let me let me move this along okay. here. <laughs> I put down so okay. Here was my thought. Here I, I made up the backstory for this match. Are you ready for okay. this? All right. So you have, have you wrote down yee 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 in your notes. Yeah. So I didn't miss it. <laughs> I'm trying to pop you here, Bob. <laughs> this is your guy. Remember? Yeah. Yeah. I did that for you. Uh, that's funny. Okay. I did that ahead. for you. All right. Anyway, so, okay, here's the backstory for the match. You ready for this? We have a Native American, right? Okay. Fighting off a demon spirit in Damien Demento who was raised by the tribe's shaman. On accident? Question mark? I would have bought that as a backstory. What the hell are you talking about? So you have the Native American... Right? It's just two guys fighting. It's the gimmick, man. Oh Go with God. it here. I'm trying to validate this because otherwise I'm going to shit that, all over it. That angle is like, that needs eight months of, of no. airtime. They can just no. be. And guess who the shaman is? Papa Shango. Damn uh, right it is. Of course it's is. Papa Shango. Damn I knew right where you're going is. with this. Okay. So there you go. There's your backstory for the match that I completely fabricated. Oh my God. Okay. Now you want to watch it. Now you're interested. I, if, if I heard that story, I would be inclined to tune in and just be like, what the hell is the WWF doing? Damn right you would. All right. So, uh, now, so now knowing that, let's go into the match. Okay. Because you're ready now. Oh, yeah. I'm ready now. Can't wait. Real quick, though. We did see a Syracuse University sweatshirt in the crowd. That's as if suggesting that we're filming this or recording this in Syracuse. I don't understand. I popped. I was like, all right. Okay. That's cool. I was trying to keep our location a secret. Yeah, well, we didn't do a good job of that the past oh. couple of episodes. Especially when I talked about Bob Backlund at a Syracuse Crunch game. You recall that, buddy? I was drunk. Right. Yeah. I figured. I was probably thinking of Tatanka. In the Demon Shaman raising. Right. Okay. <sighs> now we'll get to the match. Damien looks like he's, again, 50 pounds heavier. Kind of like Repo Man in the last episode. I don't know what these guys are doing in between episodes, but uh, he's looking real pudgy. Carbs. Yeah. Yeah. Um, almost gets pinned in 30 seconds into the match. 
It's like, okay, I wish that would have happened. That just shows you the skill set of Tatanka to win a match like that. Against Damian Demento. Yeah. All right. Damian Demento is an accomplished wrestler. All right. Uh, Damian gets clotheslined out of the ring and immediately starts cutting a promo to himself, saying that he'll do what you ask. The Indian will suffer. But he, he, there was like no time in between. It's clothesline and then he's talking. He's like talking. Right. I thought that was hilarious. I think he's talking to Ultimate Warrior. Is that who and it I, is? And I think yeah, at WrestleMania 7, when Warrior's talking to this guy. It's Damien Demento. It's Damien Demento. They're Holy communicating. Shit. I'm telling you. Holy shit. You're right. That's the gimmick. You're right. That's figured, exactly we, what it is. We figured it out. Vince was trying to be slick with that. Yeah. One. He's like, at WrestleMania 7, two years from now. This is, it's Dame, a build-up. guy, Damien Demento, is going to come around. It's a build-up. So up. if Warrior had stuck around, boom, here we go. It's a build but up. No, we're here to freaking ruin it. I thought so. I thought it was a little bit in bad taste that he's saying the Indian will suffer. Yeah, you know, because that uh, whole thing that they call the uh, Trail of Tears. Yeah, that's a thing. It's probably not a good thing to do. Yeah. Um. Either way, moving past that, before Tataka, he goes right out following that clothesline and just starts whooping his ass again. So it's like he's trying to cut a promo to himself, but Tataka's like, I don't have time for this bullshit. I'm beating your ass. Right. So, okay. I'll give him credit there. Um, I think Damien Demento, as shitty and stupid as this gimmick is, he's damn committed to it. Like, yeah. I believe that guy's nuts. Right. It's like the longstanding thing where if somebody is given a ridiculous character and they don't embrace it, you're screwed. But right. if you're given a ridiculous character and you embrace it, you can succeed. I'm not saying Demento is succeeding. No, but that's probably why he stayed on TV for so long. Exactly. That's exactly what I'm talking about. You know, By comparison, like uh, Terry Taylor, oh, when he was the Red oh, Rooster, God. he didn't understand the point of it, apparently. Right. And he didn't get a push because of it. Well, do you blame him, though? Come on. Judging by what I've heard, <laughs> judging by from what I've heard, Bad he was not supposed yeah. to act like an actual rooster. Well, and that's how he took it. Right. Which is just stupid on his part, you know. Yeah, but nobody nobody explained it to him and nobody stopped him. I guess. Yeah. The well, first come time on, he how, goes why out. Why would you stop him? I'd say keep true. doing uh, that. Fuck it, man. Keep doing if that. If you want to go do a rooster, go yeah, do a rooster. Keep doing that. They're not like you'd get a push either way. Let's no, face it. right. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, they got back into the ring. Demento took back over. Um, he went for a back elbow that he threw way too high. And it looked like Tataka was supposed to duck it. Um... But Tatanka sold it as if he got hit. Oh. And Demento clearly missed. And if I'm Vince sitting here watching this, I am probably seething because it was visual. Like, you saw that he missed. Yeah, there, there was a few awkward spots. There I was. Feel like in the match. There was. Uh, although we do get a gem from Bartlett who says when uh, he was little, he used to have some of his trucks. Dot, dot, dot. You know, Tatanka trucks. Yeah. I'm giving that a point to Bartlett. I liked that. Yeah. I thought that was funny. Vince is like, Ugh. like I feel like he just wanted a barf on that. Well, he was line. like, oh, the, the loincloths? Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, a chant of We Want Flair broke out. Yeah, no a ton know. of the crowd is throwing up the Four Horsemen sign. Who would you rather have, though? Let's be real. Demento or Flair? Or Demento. 100%. Okay. Just making sure we're on the same page. Oh, God, yeah. Because, like, as I mentioned in the previous episode, there's like, guys like Repo Man, Damien Demento. Yeah. Kamala. Like, you take all those guys over Flair like, any day. Right? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah, so, good decision on getting rid of Flair and keeping Demento. Right. And putting him over. Yeah. Yeah. He's he's big time. He's going to make you some money. For sure. Way right. more than what Flair ever would have done. Exactly. I'm not believing that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was trying to see man. if we could keep a straight face on that. I wasn't going to say nothing. The, the amount of, like, all these guys they could have gotten rid of. Let's say, f just keep Flair, give him a little bit of a raise and keep him I can there. rattle off probably five right now. Virgil. Virgil. Demento. Uh, you could probably get rid of... Repo. Yep, Repo Man. I would say... You're not going to like it. I would say Crush. You ever crush? No way. Too early. What? Yeah. You're clear. They're clearly investing into him. You can't just kind of. Your hero's coming back, and then two weeks later, oh, he's fired. F him. We didn't need him. Yeah. F him. Bartlett, get rid of his ass. Bartlett, you don't need that. Goodbye. Guy. I wonder what they were paying him. Probably too much. Probably like a sandwich or something. Hopefully. Keep him around. Hopefully. Get rid of Own Heart. You know, you don't really need him. Yeah. Who's that guy? Jabroni. Coco Beware. Cut him. God. Um. Tataka gets into his war dance theatrics. Wraps up the match pretty quick. 
though while getting pinned, Demento has like his arm up and he's calling into the air for help, which I thought kind of defeated the finish. Because he's already clearly like he's awake and like right. competent at somewhat. I was like, why is he doing that? I was like, don't do that. That's gimmick. The, that's getting the gimmick over the match, which I don't like. Give Tatanka the win. Well, I mean, Demento's not the brightest guy. No. Yeah. Uh, for me, there's nothing really of a match. I hate to say that about Tatanka. This is oh, you, nothing hold on, match. rewind that, Bob. What'd I'm not saying say? it's bad. I'm not saying it's bad. Oh, okay. I'm just saying it's nothing of a match. Sure. It's just just an enhancement. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Okay. I will never talk bad at Tatanka. I think you have bad on your notes right there. Mm. And you just don't want to say it. You no. don't want to say it into the mic. Uh, nope, I said nothing of a match. For the most part, it felt like a quick four-minute match. Yeah, you just wrote And I want to point out, as I talked to you off the air about, uh, when writing these notes, um, my printer got jammed. And I had deleted my notes. I had to rewatch like the first half of the show. It was so Demento. I had a, it probably He got was. into your printer. You'll write something good. <laughs> The Indian will suffer. The Indian will suffer. <laughs> you will enjoy the match. And then uh, I must have just ignored him because I I guess I didn't enjoy right, the match. Right. But each time I watched it, I thought it was a quick four minute match. Now, is that a good thing or a bad thing? That's good. You think it flew by. All right. Yeah. I me. disagree, but Really? Oh, I mean I, I watched essentially the I watch it I literally watched it twice. It's You eight loved minutes. it both times. I'm probably gonna watch it again tonight. Right. On repeat. Yeah. And you're going to be playing in your loincloth. <laughs> no, I don't have those trunks. Whatever, man. Whatever. Uh, we finally got a shot of the commentary table with Bartlett dressed like a reverend, it looked like. Like, he had a full black suit on with a white tie and, like, white sashes. He looked really weird. Maybe that's why they avoided a establishing shot of the commentary team in the beginning. Oh, maybe. Because it just, it was bizarre looking. I feel like at this point, definitely, even like, because he's unshaven, he just is like, why am I even here? I think they're trying to go for more of Raw's action. I hope so. Because when you're kind of, when you're starting outside, and then yeah, they're yeah. doing all these no, segments. I hope, I hope that's the thought with this. Yeah. Because it was a nice change of pace. I was like, all right, cool. Yeah, I was surprised it started off right with a match. I was like, right, okay. Yeah, right with a match. Cool. Yep. From there, we get a footage, we get footage from mm-hmm. the before-mentioned Madison Square Garden show where Bret Hart is seen giving a $100,000 check to American Red Cross for headlock on hunger. Yep. I would have thought Carlos uh, Colon would have received it considering you you'd compared think. him to a recipient of yeah, that. Yeah, so. you'd think. Um, I noted here, Brett is the perfect guy for this. He takes himself so seriously traditionally. So to him, this check presentation was probably a big deal. I, I've, he was probably honored right. like, to be the face of it. And So I think that was really cool, especially seeing, again, since he is stereotypically pretty serious about himself. Um, well, his he... words sounded really genuine. Like he cut a really nice little promo in the ring with the check and stuff. Um, I even noted here, he talked better here than he did with the feud with Razor Ramon. Um, so I thought it just goes to show when Brett's passionate about something, he's able to sell it. Well, I, maybe that's an example of he's a better talker just being him instead of Naturally. portraying exactly. the Brower character. Exactly. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Um, although with that said, I would have loved to see Ramon come running down to the ring oh my gosh. and break the check over Brett's back. Just be like, I don't care about no stinking kids, you, man. You are evil. That would have been awesome. It's for the kids. You want Razor Ramon. Come out. Break the check what over Brett's back. Hell? Punch the American Red Cross guy. Just punch him. You might as well just have Yokozuna come out. Steal the check. Because yeah. he clearly needs more food. Yeah, right. And for like, the rice. Yeah. yeah. Screw you guys. I'm Yokozuna. That would have been Monster good, too. Monster you. That would have been good, too. And then legitimately not give them the money. Salt in the eyes of the American Red Cross. Yeah, of course. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> The visual Come on. of that 93. Like, what the hell? Come on. No one told us this was You want to make the papers, buddy. There you go. The amount of bad press they'd get on that would be no. incredible. No. Come on. I would have to think so. Now, uh, coming up next year, we got a pretty big moment. <sighs> and it's a complete oversell. I'm chalking it up in the loss column for me, but uh, we can continue. If okay. Can. Uh, Vince McMahon's in the ring. Mm-hmm. And he's out there to present one of the all-time greats. Literally says that. All-time greats. Which automatically makes me go like, oh, that's Considered by who? Yeah. Who's considering him the all-time, one of the all-time greats? Really don't know. Um, It's Brutus the Barber Beefcake. 
The fans, before they knew it was Brutus, though, they seemed excited. They were like, holy shit. You're telling me they weren't excited about Beefcake? Oh. Well, Beefcake comes out. Yep. He seemed to get, like, a decent reaction. He did. Oh, okay, he did. hey, cool, Beefcake's here. Yeah, he did. Well, that doesn't last entirely long here, no. because Beefcake talks about his near-ending parasailing accident, where a woman was parasailing and drove her knees into his face. Which makes me laugh. A cr- okay, let's say that again. A career-ending, f- near-fatal parasailing accident. Right. And then, I'm telling you right now, for the longest time, for the longest time, I thought it was Beefcake parasailing, and he so did hurt I. himself. So did I. And upon listening to this, I was <laughs> like, I was thinking to myself, <laughs> you're telling me this guy couldn't see a woman? Flying at his face. What was he doing? No one was around Beefcake no. to be like, oh, hey, Brutus, there's a girl yeah, clearly out, falling from the sky. <sighs> right so, there, like, it loses me. Is this a work, though? Like, is this is this a real story? Did this really happen? I, I would assume it is. I never looked into it. I just believed them. Because if it's not, Brutus the Barber Beefcake is one of the stupidest men alive. I would have to... I would have to agree with you. Come on. I mean, he it's got to be made up. He was out for two years. I mean, I'm going to believe it. I don't... Oh, God. I'm going to believe it. That. That's bad. That's bad. Um, Beefcake has a huge announcement, though. Right. And that announcement is that he will be returning to the WWF for in-ring competition. So, and, so. Will, and will take on anyone. Strutting and cutting. Defensive man loses his mind. Yeah. Oh, my God. Bruce Beefcake's coming back. Yeah. Let's get pumped yeah. up. I'm. I just don't. Who I've never cared about a beefcake, so I don't know why anybody would be. I guess excited about this. Uh, it's noticeably. It's noticeable to me that beefcake is nervous or just not comfortable. Yeah, he's definitely jittery. Yeah, absolutely. He's like his brain is like scrambled trying to think of the words to to say. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he goes over some of the bad things that's happened oh, in his life God. in recent years, and go. you want to talk about just a depressing life. Yeah. Here we go. It starts off with his mother dying due to cancer. Yep. And his father having a heart attack and passing away shortly thereafter. Which the crowd, aww. Yeah. It's like Jerry Springer show. Yeah. It was like so oh, bad. Oh, man, sorry to hear that. So bad. And then, as if to turn his wife heel, mentions, <laughs> uh, you know, all that's happened. And then my wife turns around and throws divorce papers at me. Stole all my money. Yeah. It, I'm thinking to myself, Beefcake, you might just be a horrible guy. Yeah. Sure, you had a parasailing ac- accident, but if you're and your not parents a good, died. Sure. Okay. But if you're not a good husband. Right. That's on you. She, he's literally making her a heel. Oh, yeah. Big like, time. we don't know what happened. Exactly. So at that point in time in his life, he's like, I'm just going to give up. I mean, parasailing accident, my career's over. Everybody's left me. I have to say, though, the parasailing accident, he goes, the accident squashed the eyes into the back of my head. Yeah. T- <laughs> like, it's a cartoon character. <laughs> Like, what the hell? It's like Wile E. Coyote. I mean, I feel... Road. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, the the rock falling on yeah, him. Right. Like, <laughs> uh, he just goes on and on and on. The crowd's starting to get restless. Because he just yeah. keeps adding and adding. They, he it's had like, him. Oh my God. He had him for, I would say, five minutes. Yeah, with the parents and stuff? Yep. Oh, yeah. They and definitely then do. it just kind of goes off the hill here. Because uh. he talks about... Re- it's just... He's trying to be way too dramatic. Absolutely. He talks about reaching his hand out. Like, insinuating God, I would assume. Probably. That's how I took it. Yeah. But no, it's not God. But there is a hand there. It's not God, though. No, no, no. Who blows him out of the darkness, Bob? Who it's Hulk Hogan, brother. <laughs> yeah, no. Hulkster was always there. Brothers till uh, the end. Hogan's name gets a noticeable mixed reaction. They do. But shortly after that, we start getting boring yes. in the crowd. Like, they're sick of yep, this. Yep. They're not into it. Yeah. Uh, Beefcake is really putting over Hogan's assistance to get back uh, to where he wants to be. Mm-hmm. Beefcake is a desperate man. He has nothing to lose. So he's coming back for in-ring action without much risk attached to it. To him. Right. Because he's got nothing to lose. Right. <laughs> Towards the end here, it's like he's trying to get the crowd to chant, go for it. Yeah. Like to force it. He's like, right. just go for it, Brutus. Go for it. Go for it. And about five people go for it. They mm-hmm. say go for it, mm-hmm. and then it just it loses all sorts would of traction. Would you would have chanted that with Beefcake? No. Absolutely not. I don't care. Absolutely not. And you know what? So this whole time, I'm thinking, okay, Hogan's coming out, and Hogan's going to be with Beefcake, and they're going to tag together. Like, I'm, I'm fully expecting Hogan to be on this show. 
Well, he certainly is. He's pushing Hogan more the, than himself. Yes. The focus here is turned not from Beefcake, but rather Hulk Hogan's a great guy. Right. S- clearly setting up, I think, a future Hogan appearance. Oh, not necessarily course. right now. Well, which when way. I when I noted Hogan um, talking with WCW, I kind of take this as a way like Hogan, you better not go to WCW because we're we're going to make we're, Beefcake look like an idiot. We're promoting you, exactly. Yeah, we're promo- and not only that too. So so the promo ends, and Beefcake's like, I'm returning, basically. Yeah. So this whole long construed, drawn out thing is just for Beefcake to be like, Hey, Hogan's a great guy, and he might come back soon, but I'm back. Yeah, care about me. But we had to go through a parent's death, a divorce, a, all this bullshit. Just get to the point. Man. Nobody it's, gives a fuck about it. It's Beefcake. a huge moment for him because he had nothing. Well, okay. He couldn't pay attention at a parasailing right. area. And he was walking moment, the beach. He was so distraught yeah. that he just caught two knees to his face. Blew just, his eyeballs to the back of his head. But don't worry, brother. Yeah, he's good. Hogan was there. Yeah. So nothing can hurt him. <sighs> He feels like nothing can hurt him, considering everything he's gone through. I guess. So he announces that he's signed an open challenge for anyone to uh, oppose him, I guess. Right, you could right, say. right. Can't say I'm excited about uh, Beefcake returning to Come on, WWE. open challenge, dude. Come on. Come on. Better be Shango. Better be Repo. Repo? I'll take Repo. He's repossessing his face that he just got reconstruction. I, that's true. I, it better not... Oh, my God. Could you imagine? Beefcake, you didn't pay for those screws. You're done, brother. I'm taking your face. Gotta, gotta, gotta hook him out. <laughs> Holy crap. Could I'm, you imagine? I'm telling you, you want to make some money, listen oh. to listen to Icopod. Yeah. There you go. We'll get the ideas to you 25 years after the fact. So? Perfect. Yeah. I mean, we could call up Barry Dorso right now. Like, Barry, get the it. Repo yeah. costume out. Call Brutus. We know he probably needs some money. They both do. Well, yeah, I do too. And then we can bring him out, recreate it on Raw. Yep. Have him cut the exact same promo. Right. Yeah. How are we not doing this? It's done deal. We should go to networks and be like, hey guys, so we're going to use all living wrestlers Mm -hmm. starting in 93 and we want to just recreate each episode. Right. You think they go for it? Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Hogan? Hulk Hogan? He's like 64 years old. Yeah, sure. He's a racist. Book him. Great. Sex tape? Great. Can we can we film the can we put the sex Let's tape? Just put that on. No, I don't I don't want to do that, but okay. <laughs> so yeah, clearly we're really pumped up about that. Uh, uh coming out of there, we just get another WrestleMania 9 promo. Yeah, Caesar Palace, same one we've seen about four times at this point. Yeah. I can't, I don't know, man. I don't know if I'm really excited for WrestleMania. Mix 9 it at the F up. It's giving us the same damn promo. Cost cutting measures, man. Uh, what do we got there? Next, we got the second match of the night. Yep. Coco and Owen, high energy, taking on two significantly larger guys. We got Iron Mike Sharp and somebody else. Didn't catch his name. Von Kress. Okay. Who would go on to be known as Big Vito. Really? Yes. Holy shit. I thought you would have noticed that. I didn't recognize He's way out of shape, though. Yeah, for sure. And so he's I also, him. I want to say his, he doesn't have eyebrows. Really? I didn't I, he looks like either. A, he looks like a conehead. <laughs> he really did <laughs> when I was paying attention he, he looked he like did. a conehead I was he like did. what the hell maybe that was his name wasn't that a show it, or a movie, movie. Yeah. yeah a movie um, I was too consumed though with the ass shot we got of the raw girl before Owen and Coco came out wasn't she smoking hot smoking hot yeah and smoking. Vince, Vince even says he goes speaking of beefcake let's go up to ringside as what? the ass is on the screen oh nice and Randy goes I love it <laughs> It was awesome. You know Macho got with her. He was loving He that got ass. with her 100%. And it was, too. It was right in the camera. I was like, oh, hell yeah. I, she might have been like the best looking raw girl I've I had some so high far. energy after that, oh, I'll tell you. God, keep it in your pants, yeah. man. Yeah. Um, speaking of which, though, I do like higher energy. I think that, like the tandem of Coco and Owen works. It's a quick tag team. It's a quick tag team. It's a young... Well, I even a say, fresh tag. Team. It's funny you say young because I wrote down it's a young team and I was like, oh, no, relatively young. Relatively, like young. Owen's young. Yeah, Coco's yeah. been there a little while. Right. The outfits though are the shits. Like they're horrible yeah. outfits. Horrible. Um, I also noted that Owen's definitely looking better than Coco here. I think Coco is more or less putting Coco over, and Owen's trying to get the team over. Oh sure. You know what I'm saying? Well, it's like the '80s mentality, right? Which is where Coco is, yeah. you know, from or whatever. Um, although Owens work in circles around Mike Sharp, um, they do work good, decent tandem moves, Coco and Owen. Um, but that said, the finish was pretty cool. 
The missile drop kick from the top by Coco, followed by the pin by Owen. Um, it was a quick match, much to the approval of the fans. I feel like they were wicked into this. Yeah. And we have yet to have a match, a mid-match commercial. So that's two matches with no commercial cutting in between. Now, granted, they didn't have much time to cut. I was going to say, the first one was four minutes. This one's less than two. But I like that. I'm glad we're not chopping the matches up. Yeah, I don't, I don't mind. I mean, yeah. keep them short or whatever. That's Quick, fine. high energy. That's the tag team name. That's the match you got. There yeah. There you go. I liked it. Yeah, they did. And they did keep a fast pace. Absolutely. So, the whole time, really. Which is refreshing compared to the other tag teams, which are, I, I want to say, mostly all brawling. I mean, the yeah. Steiners are suplexes and stuff like that, yeah. but well, the, most of the other teams are mostly mat oriented yeah. power moves. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, following that is a video of Doink. Yep. Attacking so, Crush. It's like a recap of his antics. Yeah, it's yeah. noticeably, they're definitely kind of, t- you know, toning it down. Absolutely. They make note that uh, the fake arm that Doink had used was likely filled with lead, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which would explain why Crush was just wiped out on yeah. a plastic arm. Right. Um, and that, I guess, just leads right, as, right into our feature match of the night. Yeah. Doink the Clown against Typhoon. Yeah. And you know what? Doink entered to a kind of an odd reaction. I feel like people didn't know whether to laugh at Doink or boo him. It was like a really mixed, like weird, like this is a clown. What do we do? Well, it's it's funny. I have I took it as the crowd actually liked him. I think they well because they start chanting Doink's name right as he's getting the better of Typhoon in the beginning of the match. Yeah, the like, New they're York chanting crowd. Doink. Yeah, the Manhattan crowd is seemingly I'd probably say 80, 80 to eighty five percent behind Doink. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think I want to say it's because. Doink is such a unique character, and he's a good worker. So I noticed, yeah, I noticed that because if you look, so okay, you guys, you, especially from the match previous, you got Iron Mike Sharp, Conehead, versus Owen, Coco, right. and then a clown comes out, and he's a mean clown, and he's very, he's strikingly good in the ring. Which I feel like throws people out because he starts the match off with like wrestling takedowns. And yeah. like he's trying to take down Typhoon with wrestling moves. Because I feel like people are expecting him to come out and kind of be almost like a Damien Demento where he doesn't really know moves. He's like a evil clown. But he's throwing wrestling moves out. So it's like, fuck yeah to this guy. No, I agree. And the, th- the thing that I really like about Doink is one, his theme music. It's, Absolutely, it's great because it just starts off with the typical clown thing. It goes just immediately like, Dun-dun. yeah, yeah, it's awesome. And Doink plays the evil but yet creepy clown like perfect. He was born to play Doink. I, Matt Bourne was born to play Doink. Yeah, no question about it. And it's such a shame that the Doink character turned into what it did. Ugh. Because what Matt Bourne made it, people are going to hate this. That's a main event character. That's a main event character. See, I don't know. With Matt Bourne playing it. I don't know. Because I I was thinking about I was thinking about it earlier. And I was thinking of former world champions. Right. And I don't think a guy like Doink would get to that level. I don't know. Can you picture the world champion Doink the Clown? Is in competition. To, well, no. so, okay, so hear me out here. All right, so we got 93 Doink. Yes. What if that Doink turns into an even darker clown into the Attitude Era and is like Batman Joker Doink and like way darker? I think it works. I think, is he a former WWE champion? Yes. I'm saying yes. I think it could work. I don't know. For some reason, I'm not, I'm not buying it. I could see him as a IC champion, maybe. Undercard guy. Of course. Upper mid-card. I, and don't get me wrong. I like Doink. I really do. I enjoy the character and everything. But I just... I For some reason, I'm not buying into him. Well, he's a, a clown. I mean, that's why... That's... Not, yeah, you're right. not buying into it because he's a clown. Right. Even as an evil clown, though. I'm thinking if they played it up more past 93 and kind of really dialed it up... I think I could get work. behind the Attitude Era version, I guess. Well, that's what I'm saying. Well, because if you look at ECW, so look at Matt Bourne, ECW, following his run and, you know. Yeah, that's such a like, lower level. It's lower level, but that character of him. That's him 50 50, though. That's him, Matt Bourne, exactly. and a clown. So but if you like, go to my turn that, in, like, turn in out of the clown, like, now he's resenting this position. 
Yeah. But he's still using... I don't know. I think... I'm telling you, I think I he could have got there. Strictly as Doink, there. though, I don't think so. I think if you try... Well, what did he go with as an ECW? Born Again. It was? Yeah. All right. That well, was his name. I don't know. I think... Still, though, to me, it was like... Because he wore the paint and stuff still. I think it was hat. I think it, was, it wasn't like fully on. It was like He looked face. disheveled. Like the character was well, very disheveled. Get, yeah, disheveled clown. I, I, I'm telling you, Bob, I think it could have worked. I think it could have worked. I don't know. That would be interesting. I wonder what anybody else thinks. Email us. Icopodcast at gmail.com. Plug. We're getting really good at that. Wrestling recast that guy. Plug. <laughs> uh, the match was pretty quick. Yes. Um, not anything overly wonderful to me. I thought it was funny that it's a natural disaster against the evil clown. Yeah, that is, Welcome that's a good point. Welcome to the WWF in 93. Yeah. yeah. Meanwhile, the first match was a freaking Native American Indian against outer reaches of our mind. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah. I don't know. And then we yeah. have a conehead in the second yeah. squash match. Yeah, yeah. Um, I thought for what it was, like Typhoon hits a huge, big, like a big power slam yes. on Doink, which I thought was notable. Um, Doink pinned him with like a handful of tights, but the tights were in his crotch area, which I thought looked awkward as hell. He's like pulling at the crotch area. Um, I, I think here, so here's what made this memorable to me. And here's why I would say, if you like Doink, if you like the character Doink, go back and watch this match for one reason. And it was the last shot of Doink that we get. And he's kind of circling the ring and exiting. And the camera goes right up to him, and Doink's eyes, Matt Bourne playing Doink right here. Oh, yeah. And it's still so early for Doink. I mean, the you know, he's a relatively, quote-unquote, new character. Is so good. Though his dark eyes behind that clown makeup and just his expression in his face, he looks like a serial killer. A hundred percent. He looks like a murderer. Yep. And it's so good. That's why I'm telling you, dude, this, like I said, if... If you want to see a Doink match, it's not a great match, but that one second camera shot at the end may go back and watch. So that. I wouldn't even watch the match then. Just go to the aftermath. Just watch that. And it's you're right. You're absolutely right because I remember watching it. That's a guy that you just don't trust. He's scary. I'm not. If I see him walking down the street, even if he has clown makeup or not, if he's looking at me like that, I'm like, I'm going on the other side. So if that clown, same get up, same attire, same makeup, is in an alley. In, in, on the streets of New York City? Yeah. I, I'm i buying that. I'm believing in that. And I ain't going near that guy. Because he's pretty fucking scary. Yeah, so I guess, I mean, if you if you build, if you you focus on that part... That's what I'm saying to you, Bob. You're going to, I mean, That's for, what I'm saying. still, I think for me, you're really going to have to drive that home for me to buy into it. And they could have. They had plenty of time. If they kept Doink around and Matt Bourne stayed, Yeah. you know, with his ducks in a row... They definitely didn't utilize that character to its fullest Not even close. Potential. Not even close. But I kind of blame that on Matt Bourne a little bit. Oh, yeah. So, it's know. the same thing with Gennetti. Right. The whole issue there. But I think there was definitely potential there. Well, it's great that we're pointing out the great things about Doink because I did write down that, you know, shortly after making those looks, he tries to grab his jacket and doesn't, he can't reach it. Yeah, so he's, he's got to like, jump. Yeah, he's got to hop. Yeah, I know. I laughed I know. at that. I was like, oh, wow. Although, although I think Matt Bourne definitely has lifts in his boots here. Oh, he might. Like, I think they're noticeable. Yeah. So it's still funny, like with even lifts in his boots, like he still has to jump up to get right. the jacket. But I, I, I blocked that part out. Because like, uh, you can even see they kind of transition away from it as soon yeah. as he's like doing that. So. Yeah. Um, it's a, I guess it's a fine victory for Doink. I mean, he beats a former tag champion. Yeah, a bigger guy. Yeah, yeah. Typhoon. It was kind of funny, though, after the roll-up, Typhoon doesn't really sell anything. He's just like, what yeah, the hell? He's just pissed, like, oh, okay, oh, whatever. Man. The clown beat me? Whatever. Oh, this sucks. Yeah. I wonder if Typhoon would do anything else memorable in 93. Anything shocking. Probably not. Okay, like so. Like going through a wall with headgear on. <laughs> trips over. Bob, you're giving He fucking away. fell. All right. <laughs> Fucking fell on his ass. <laughs> um, okay, so really quick. Yeah. Do you prefer tugboat or typhoon? Typhoon. I'm saying tugboat. No, I hated tie. Oh, I hated tugboat. I like the outfit. No, the damn music. <laughs> doo, 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 doo. I like tugboat. Oh. I like tugboat. I like the natural disasters. I, I've, I've stated numerous times already. Peak quake na- is my guy. Well, peak natural disasters, yeah, with the focus on earthquake, yes. yes. But singles run, typhoon, 
Talk about? I'm saying talk about. Oh, singles run. That's what I'm saying. Well, yeah. Oh, I thought it was meant like character. Well, no, I don't. No, I'm saying. Well, you know, yeah, typhoon. typhoon is a singles is awful. Sucks. Yeah, yeah I guess. Tug, I guess by no, that's default, what I'm tugboat. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like here, would you rather have seen him as tugboat or typhoon? I'm saying tugboat. No, nah, typhoon. <sighs> because, Whatever. Buddy. Because typhoon has like a a bigger like a badass. I don't know, like a badass feeling. So doing beating somebody like typhoon is better than a guy who's dressed up like a freaking tugboat. Whatever, bro. I I think you kind of agree with me, and you're hating yourself for it. We return to Raw after a commercial with Vince talking to Todd Pettengale, talking about WWF Mania. They're really plugging that still. Oh my god! We're a month it's in, like and over. Still it's like overkill at this point. I mean, I like Mania, and I wanted to watch it until all this bullshit. Yeah. Um, Todd does say though that Giant Gonzalez will be on the upcoming, like the upcoming episode of WWF Mania. Mm-hmm. Okay. Why not Raw? Like, why yeah. haven't we seen this guy on Raw? Yeah. So I thought that was weird. You're going to plug him at 10, 10 a.m. on Saturday on morning. Saturday morning. Compared to Raw where... Like his first TV appearance right. probably, I would think. Right. Aside so, from Rumble. So I didn't like that. I didn't get that. Um, but I did want to make note of that. Well, I want to note that the camera seemingly remains on them too long. And Vince has a look of like, I don't want to be on TV with this guy. <laughs> yeah. Like, all right, we're good. All right. All right. See you later. Yeah. Like, he doesn't want anything. No, to it definitely did. Cause they're literally standing there with the mics. Yeah. And it's like, for like, uh, probably it's, it's probably like three seconds, but it feels like 20 forever. Yeah. Yeah. And like Todd's all like, yeah, I mean, I'm happy to be here. And Vince is just like, all right, are we good? <laughs> are, you, away, are, are we clear? All right. Cut get away. this kid out of here. Yeah. yeah. No, I did notice that. I okay. did notice that. Moving on, we got a very, I thought was very good. Um, so Fink's in the ring, announces the passing of Andre the Giant, yep. as you noted before. We then got a 10-bell salute with pictures of Andre's wrestling moments mixed in. I thought this was a really cool, it was cool of them to do. And if you think about it, it's the first of many raw tributes to fallen heroes over the years. Like, this starts it. Yeah. Because we get so many moving forward. Yep. And just the classiness of this. I, I thought it was, was nice. Yeah, I, I thought it was really I good. mean, Andre, I think, played a huge part. Absolutely. Of the success for WWF in the Hogan era, for yeah. sure. Yeah, So that was nice. And I know Vince was pretty close with Andre anyway. Right, so right. So the whole this was to family. Be, yeah, this is to be expected. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, but it's still nice to see it. Yeah. Uh, transitioning out of there, we had the 1993 Royal Rumble winner. We did, but guess what happened before that, Bob? What? I didn't write it down. Another iGoPro commercial. Thanks, you love, Brett. You love pointing these out. Yeah. I'm trying to distance ourselves. Make a name for ourselves. No. IcoPod, even no. though we're stealing the name from iCopod. No, Pro. they ripped us off. Oh, shit. Yeah, right. They ripped us yeah, off. Yeah, they, they knew. So I got to give them, you know, a little to, hey, thanks for ripping us off. You guys are good. Yeah. But we'll, yes. we'll last longer than iCopro did. Absolutely. Yeah. Watch us be like the last episode. <laughs> they said they were be around for You're real. done. Uh, okay, so after the Ico Pro promo, yeah, sorry saying that ten times a day. Thanks, Brett. You gotta hear or gotta want it, whatever they say. Uh, 19, 1993 uh, Royal Rumble winner Yokozuna mm-hmm. makes his first singles appearance since winning the Rumble. Yep. His opponent is Bobby DeVito. Do you know who Bobby DeVito is? No, Bob. He's actually. You're looking at me like I don't oh, care. Because you know every fucking guy. <laughs> I'm surprised you even noticed this, this stuff. Is Jay Brones. All right, well, he would be known as Tony DeVito, or simply DeVito. He'd go on to wrestle for ECW as a member of the Dubaldis. Oh, I didn't even know that. Yeah, no, it's better off. That was a horrible group, so go ahead. Uh, Savage puts Yoko over here on commentary, just as strong as he looks following the Royal Rumble, which I was like, okay. I mean, Well, I would do that, too, because I mean, I just lost the guy. Right, so you want him to look pretty good. Yeah, I wouldn't yeah. be, oh, he's, oh, man, no, Yokozuna, he's just a fat slob. No, if I'm Savage, I'm, oh, that was a fluke. <laughs> I'm putting myself over. Fuck Yoko. The referee told me he was going to count. Yeah. Fuck Yoko. Yeah. Um, all right. So this whole time, and this was so funny and just so ridiculous. They attempt to talk to Duggan over the phone. Ugh. But the first time they connect to him, his line's dead. Yeah. Like he doesn't go through. So it's like, that's hilarious. I can just picture Jim Duggan over the other, like on the landline, just fumbling around with his phone. How do you get to work this thing, yeah. tough guy? Hey, Betsy, what the hell do I do with this? Just furious at the phone. So that yeah. was, I was cracking up with that. Um, but going into the match, Yoko starts it off with a really good sidekick, followed by finally Duggan connects on the other line with Vince. Uh, and Duggan says he's he's starting to get fired up watching that big Yakozuma in the ring. 
Yep. And so he says it, Yakozuma. Vince corrects him, and Duggan says, whatever you call him, some Jap name. Yes. I was like, holy shit. I know. Holy shit. So Duggan continues to cut in and out here on the phone. He must be calling from his two by four because it's shit. Like he just, it sucks. You'd think it'd be better if this, you know, we're four rows in. Like, come on, get yeah, it you together. Would, yeah, you figure it out. Right. The connection. Um, Yokozuna tosses this guy from Pillar of Post, obviously. Yoko finishes him with a bonsai as Duggan promises to knock Yoko from his feet when they meet in the ring. He was hugely fired up during this squash the whole time over the phone, and I just feel like he gets flustered at the end and is like yelling and hangs up. Well, I I enjoyed the intensity for his promo. I just wish that every other word wasn't cut out because yeah, you, you couldn't, couldn't hear, hear what he's saying. Yeah, um, if I'm a fan though, uh, at the time you're and, interested. Sure, but he's promising that down with Yoko. The last time he promised anything. Uh, what I'm happened? Gonna, I'm gonna try real hard at the yeah. right role. He didn't even show up. He didn't show up. So how am I supposed to be like? Oh yeah, Duggan will be He'll there. He'll do it. He might not even be there. Right. He might just. Eh, no, I agree. Try some. He can't even be over the phone. Let alone yeah. <laughs> the match. Yeah, you can't figure out his phone. I was right. gonna knock out, knock, right. knock Yokozuna. Right. Um, it's honestly though, it's it's a feud I'm intrigued in. I think Duggan still has name value. I feel like that's fair. And it's a good TV feud for Yoko to get yes. some more mo- uh, momentum heading yes. into WrestleMania 9. Yep. So I can only see positives coming out of this. I agree. I agree. And it gives, you know, Duggan a chance to be on TV. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he doesn't have any so direction. he's happy. Yeah, yeah he's, he's happy. He definitely doesn't have any direction. Right. Um, it is announced, or mentioned, I should say, that they will wrestle next weekend on Superstars. Okay. So on the next episode here of Echo Pod, we'll, we'll find out what happens. Okay. Um, with that showdown. Uh, following that incredible match with Yokozuna. Of course. Uh, Vince McMahon interviews the WWF World Tag Team Champions. Yep, ringside, ringside. Yeah, uh, McMahon talks about the crowd chanting something, but there isn't any concrete answer as to what he's referencing. Right. He's like, oh, what's the crowd chanting? I think it was supposed to be like a Steiner Brothers chant or like nasties, nasties or something. Uh, but like, I couldn't even make out what yeah, they were saying. I don't know. I don't know. And like Vince just noticed when he turns back around and is like, okay, let's carry on. <laughs> like I think he was expecting like that that usual A chant to help him out. Yeah, like well like if Yoko were to come out, yeah. people would be like, Brett, all right, you know, Brett, right. Brett, Brett. Right. So I think he was anticipating nasty because they're feuding at the time. Right. Just didn't really happen. Right. Um They're out here, the money incorporated to taunt Brutus Beefcake. Yeah. Because they just don't care about what he talked about. Right. Uh, DBS talks about Beefcake's sob story. Humpty Dumpty. <sighs> right. Screw loose and stuff like yeah. that. Um, he talks about Beefcake getting knocked uh, knocked down, screw loose, and thinks that Beefcake's is nuts to offer an open, open challenge to anyone in the WWF. Yeah, he says it's like a slap in the face after three years not being on yeah, TV. Yeah, like who are you to come back yeah. in here and just think, oh, I can beat up anybody? Which you, you got to kind of agree with that, DiBiase. I think it's a valid point, sure. Yeah. Um, DiBiase says that they will get Beefcake a match, mm-hmm. and they decide to flip a coin, which IRS is like, oh, I got one right here. Yeah. You know, it's funny that of course. it's obviously of course. pre-planned here. Uh, DiBiase says he wins the coin toss. Without even showing IRS that it's heads or tails. Nobody saw the coin, so yeah. you you know that's BS. Right. Like, it probably was tails. Yeah. He's like, oh, heads. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I, I'm I facing wanna. him. Yeah. I'm facing I thought, I have to say, before we continue with this, I, I think it's a waste of time for them to be talking about a singles guy. Like, why is a tag team out here bitching about a singles guy? I think it's foreshadowing. See, you would know that. I wouldn't. I think it's foreshadowing. I guess. Well, because... Well, you take it back You from the, know what they're... Right, but... I kind of... Let's say let's say we're watching a 93. Mm-hmm. Okay, and we both don't know what's going on. Right. You're assuming Beefcake is bringing Hogan with him. Well, that's Judging what I'm saying. Judging by the promo. Well, that's what I'm saying, but... So when you have a tag team... Right. And it's you know it's two against one, well, he's already talking about a second guy. Right. My mind would automatic. I would think automatically go... All right, so a Hulkster's coming. Is that what they want you to think? Yeah, because okay. Hogan's always there. All right. You know, he's a handout. Well, because I picked up on that, but I wasn't sure if I was supposed to. I didn't, I didn't know if that's what they I mean, I could be completely overthinking it. No, but I think that makes sense. Yeah. All right. Um, Money Incorporated thinks this is a great idea, mind you, except for, oh, their, yeah. except for their manager, Jimmy Hart, 
who comes out and says, guys, we, should, we don't need to be doing this. No, it's, no, no. it's beefcake. You know, he's washed up, all these yeah. things. Like, we have more things that we got to worry about. Right. Uh, you know, focusing on the tag team titles. He doesn't want them getting hurt. In the yeah, he says ending. it's a waste of time for the team. Like, oh, stop, yeah. stop talking about this. Stop being silly. Right. Focus so. on what we have. Right. Uh, DiBiase calms down Jimmy, saying it's just a workout. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. totally discrediting Beefcake. Right. Uh, they aren't worried about losing to a guy who hasn't wrestled in three years. With a broken face. Yeah. Uh, IRS knows for a fact that Beefcake's doctor's bill has been rising, and Beefcake has been paying the taxes He's on it. He's a tax cheat. So they're here to collect... Oh my, IRS goes on a tangent here. He yeah. just starts ripping them a new one. Yeah. And it's all like tags related. Shit. It's so funny because they're, they're putting over like the injury and how he got, and then here's IRS snatching the mic away and talking about putting his gimmick over. I loved it. I thought it was hilarious. Like he, he somehow ties beefcakes tragedies in with him being a tax cheat. Right. I love this. And I, I agree. I, that's why I love money incorporated. I don't There's know if I, so, love I, I love Money Incorporated, but I think that was a well well done piece there by IRS. It kind of makes me wonder why Repo Man doesn't have more of an association with these guys. Oh my god! You know what I mean? Like DBS is the rich snob. Oh, obviously, like my IRS is god. there to give him tax cheats and like give IRS some like yeah, sidekick money, of course. But then there can be like, hey Repo, why don't you go get that for us? Yeah, we're gonna hire you out. Yeah, that's so good. How do you not do that? That's so good. I love it. It would keep Rebo Man relevant forever. Right. Well, he's he's kind of a lackey, almost like Virgil was. Yeah, but yeah, but Repo Man is even better in that role because better. yeah, Virgil always had a body at least. Right. But Repo Man's like, oh, I'm gonna sneak around. And... Yeah, he's like the the scum. Yeah, it's like he does the dirty work for the rich guys. Yeah, he's the guy living in the apartment. Yeah, above like a sushi place. Like bragging, he knows he's got these rich friends, yeah. and people are like, whatever, man, that's yeah. not true. Teddy's gonna give me a hundred bucks this weekend. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay Repo. Yeah, Teddy exists, buddy. Yeah. Um, I love that idea. That's awesome. And IRS is mad because Beefcake has been paying his fair share. Yeah. On the tax, I'm not paying yeah. his taxes. Yeah. Um, DBS, he says they wouldn't do anything to Beefcake's million dollar face as if to kind of ease Jimmy Hart's concerns, but that right. was definitely sarcastic. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, Jimmy just wants them to quit joking around mm-hmm. to end the interview segment. Mm-hmm. He does. He pulls them to the back. They basically yeah. find out. What do you, back. what do you think about the idea here of Beefcake and DBS? I'm not totally close to it um, because it's two guys kind of from the same era. Like, I'm glad they're at least sticking with that. Um, I would have, to be honest with you, I would have preferred an IRS beefcake to a DiBiase beefcake. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely prefer DiBiase. He's the workhorse of the group, I feel well, like. Well, I wish DiBiase was doing something else. Like, something up high. I want, not that it would make sense, but I would have liked to see DiBiase and Shawn Michaels be having matches for the IC belt. It wouldn't make sense because they're both heels, but I feel like that would have been good. Like, I would have ele- elevated him to an IC picture. Even though you're trying to go with the young guys or whatever, but DiBiase is one of them guys where he can help get younger guys over and be yeah. credible. You know what I mean? It's like, holy shit, it's Ted DiBiase. Yeah, I mean, I like I like his role here, to be honest with I'm you. Just tag I'm, yeah, I'm fine. Yeah. I'm fine with it. And they're still being presented as a major team angle yeah it's know? a main yeah it's a major portion of the company it's like money ink yeah um I, just the idea though these guys are definitely the 80s feel exactly you know and oh, raw, so much even beefcake too yeah like the whole the whole thing yep and the whole thing just raw has that not it has like a 90s feel yeah. a more modern feel right. at the time yeah. so you have these guys on there it's just like this isn't it feels dated yes it does 100 it does but i think dbiz is the right choice to go with it when we get to that match, yeah, we'll see how it goes. But right. I just like that they're they spend some time on it to build, give some interest. So yeah, not only that, but I feel like this is one of the first times we've seen Money Inc. heavily since we started Icopod. Yep, and I think this is also the first Raw exclusive angle. Yeah. Okay. Most, well, I mean, Repo and well, Savage. and Savage, but yeah. that that's already over. Right. It's about a week. That was just a quick. Yeah. This I think will have a little bit more depth to I it. I agree. So. I agree. It's cool to see that start on Raw. Mm-hmm. Um, following that segment, Lex Luger comes out. Narcissist Lex Luger. And let me tell you, as soon as he comes out of that curtain, he gets a nice middle finger an inch from his face. I loved it. Oh, I did too. I, I laughed. Shout out 
to the jean jacket guy for yeah. that one. He was like halfway over. Oh my He's like, God. fuck you, Luger. And Luger's just like, I don't give a shit. It might as well have been on his cheek. Yeah. Like, but, that's how close it was. But to me, like that's the perfect re- uh, reaction from Luger. <laughs> Completely ignores it. Just no sense. Yeah, well, it. what are you going to do? Are you going to yell at the guy? No. Could have decked him. Not for Luger's character here. No, 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 I know. But the person could have been like, you know, yeah. Luger could think, oh, this guy's going to hit me. But he's just right. like, I don't care. I don't care. Yeah, he didn't give Plays a shit. Plays it. Uh, perfect. I, it's hilarious, but perfect. It's hilarious. And you know what? I was thinking, it's like, holy shit. You know, because this guy easily could have stabbed Lex Luger if he wanted to. Well, I would hope they're checking. But still, like, yeah. that's how close he was to it. Oh, he was right he on was him. over the barricade. Yeah. So I thought that was interesting, but. I loved the middle finger. I Thank have, you so much, Jean that, Jacket. Yeah, I have that point. Thank out. you. Uh, so this is the main event of the evening. It's Lex Luger against Jason Knight. Do you know who Jason Knight is? I feel like the name sounds familiar. Well, he also competed for ECW. Okay. Later on, or actually, is it ninety four? No, Jason Knight was the body guy that was like with Just Incredible in like two thousand oh, ninety nine two thousand. Yeah. He did have a run, or he, notable run, like 94 with ECW, too. So he could look like Danny Doring to me. I don't know. He's super annoying. I hated that guy. Well, Jason Knight. The character. I don't know the guy. Yeah, but he, it was amounted to nothing. Like, it, it was a waste. Like, who is yeah. this guy? We he's, don't need him. Yeah, he's just a... In ECW, though, he was just like a body A filler. Guy. He was a filler guy. Well, he was a TV champion. Really? He got really good heat in ECW. I just hated his matches. Oh, I didn't even know he got that far. Yeah, he was... The, the TV run, I think, was 94. Oh, okay. So, yeah, I'm not yeah. necessarily so And then he was gone 94. for, I think, a few years, and he okay. showed back up again. All right. But, uh, so Luger's in the ring uh, prior to the match starting, and he has uh, his usual mirror there. And an oversized woman, oversized ring girl, walks behind him, and he is absolutely disgusted. He flips shit. Yeah. But I have to say, where's Bobby? Oh, is he not around? No Bobby Heenan. For the match? Nothing. Maybe he was too excited and he had to leave ringside. He had changed his pants? Yeah. yeah. Well, you he didn't even come out with him. Well, no, I don't think he's... I didn't take it as, like, a manager. Oh, I definitely did. If he's there with the debut introducing him and showing him off. No, I just kind of took it as introducing... Really? Him. Yeah, I didn't take it as, oh, I'm going to manage him. Oh, I thought from now on Heenan was going to be ringside for him. No, I, I just think it was a guy that was excited to find somebody to take out Perfect. Well, yeah, which is why I thought he was going to manage him. Like, yeah, but... I'm going to get back at Perfect. I'm going to use this guy to do it. Yeah, but like in the promos, he never really made it seem like as if he'd be there. I yeah. found something. Like, oh, we... Like, there's no we. It's always just him. I don't know. I, I just expected Bobby to be with him, I guess. I don't know. I thought that was weird. Um... So, I believe there's a commercial break. Yes. After there. And then we come back. It's a highlight <laughs> video of Mr. Perfect throwing a football. Oh, to Steve my Jordan God. of my favorite football team, the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, Perfect, you know, throws great passes to Jordan. And then Perfect's like, oh, you haven't seen anything yet or whatever. And he proceeds to throw a pass to himself. And Steve Jordan clearly does like the wow expression too early. You can see the edit. Yeah. And he, he clearly was doing it too early, so but they couldn't cut out just right. in time. Right. So the, you see the ball in the air. Yeah. And then they go to Jordan, Steve Jordan, who's just like, wow. <laughs> And Perfect's just like, yeah, I totally did that. <laughs> Holy shit. Just a corny-ass segment. I have at least a paragraph on this. All right, go ahead. Um, I have to say, though, if now if Luger clotheslined the chubby chick, if he just clotheslined the shit out of her, I would have been sold on a three-year title run for Lex Luger. That, what? That would have got you to... Got me to the Lex you Luger want, fan train. You want Lex Luger to beat up an obese woman. Clothesliner. What the hell is wrong right with Right over the top ropes. Just get out of my ring. Wow. Moving on to that video package, dude. I, oh, my God. I'm so excited to talk about this. Okay. First of all, I had no idea who Steve Jordan was, but as soon as it said Minnesota Vikings, I knew you were all in. Like, yeah. This is the Bob said. I mean, I'm a Vikings guy, but I'll be honest with you, I don't know who Steve Jordan was. So, oh. Oh. Yeah. I'm not a, I wasn't a, I wasn't a fan, really, until... Like a couple years later, I was still super young at the time. I wasn't a big fan until Warren Moon got in there. You don't know who that is. No, and I don't care. I know you don't. So he introduces Mr. Perfect as the perfect passer. And it was so obvious to me that Jordan is reading off a teleprompter. Oh, yeah. Like you can visibly see his eyes reading. Uh, We got some BS like football passing back and forth. 
until he said perfect throws a ball, runs after it and catches it. And it was the ultimate Baywatch moment. It was like yeah. slow mo, several shots of the ball soaring through the air. And as soon as perfect catches it, like the phony like expression and demeanor of this Steve Jordan guy is hilarious and like really sells the absurdity of yeah. perfect giving the ball a head start before he chases it down and catches it. Yeah. Cause like you said, he's just like, wow. And like that's it. That's, yeah. that's the whole thing. It's a horrible sell job by Jordan. Uh, and it was so nineties too. Like, oh, it yeah. felt so dated. I mean, you got to credit the guy for trying. I mean, yeah, he did. Come on. And like, to me, it's, it seemed like a video you'd show before gym class, like a football game in gym class. Right. It's like, this is how you like, look at this, kids. Yeah. It's, it's kinda, like one of them videos. Yeah. Like a gym it, class video. Yeah. It could remind me of those, uh, what's his name? Steve Clancy baseball videos. Yeah. Like, growing up, I'd always see those as, this is how you get a ground ball. Right. You want to be a, you wanna be Dude, a great baseball yes. player, throw it in this little tunnel. That's what it's it It's something like that, but for, like, football, yeah. That would it, that's exactly what it felt like. And I, I loved it. it. I want to say his name, Steve. I should know the name. I'm, I saw it countless times growing yeah. up, but I can't remember. I loved it. Um... Back to the Luger match with Jason Knight. It's yeah. just a way for Luger to just get over. He um, seems to be stiffing the shit out of this Jason Knight kid. Yeah. Um, which I was like, okay, you know, calm, th- calm down, Lex. Um, by the way, Lex, Tatanka wants his ring gear back. <laughs> it is the same thing. It's the same, same thing. thing. Just it's white and thing. silver or whatever. Like the tassels, the loincloth, everything. It's like kind of the same thing. No, yeah, you're right. Um, I think I haven't noticed here. Like, Jason Knight has a decent body. I didn't even notice. He's a decent body. I think I would have had a larger jobber in there. Yeah, like, like Luger, more of an out of shape. Guy. Yeah, yeah, Luger being so pissed off about the woman. Right. And then you have the camera zoom over to his opponent. And he'd be like, "What the hell? I can't yeah, even get a this? guy that cares about himself." Right. And just viciousness right. just beats the crap out of him. Well, if there, if it's any consolation to you, Bob, at least Lex's body is all natural. A hundred percent. Yeah. He's never done anything. Never. Ever. Right. Why? I don't even know why. That's just good milk. A little bit of... Steak, probably. Like pro maybe. Yeah. Steak's in there, probably. Right. Um, juice. During, during the match... <laughs> yeah, apple juice. Um, <laughs> right, right, right. During the match, it's announced that Beefcake has accepted the challenge. Yeah. So, uh, he'll be fighting Ted DiBiase next week. Right. Uh, I thought Lou was getting pretty good reaction for his offense, whether it was cheers or the fans telling him, you know, hey, you suck. Well, hey, so... At one point, Luger screws up a clothesline, and somebody in the crowd immediately yells, "You messed up!" Yeah, in a oh, yeah. really angry voice, and you can clearly hear it. Yes, I so do. That was hilarious. I do remember hearing that. Uh, Luger wins the match following a like a four, just a right forearm. Yeah, it was stupid. You know what though? People were calling for the torture rack in the crowd. Like, oh, they really? were doing like the torture. Oh rack yes, thing. yeah. So they know who Luger is and what his move is. Yeah. So that was cool. I don't think he does it. Uh, ever yeah, here. Probably but, not. Uh, he ends up pinning uh, Knight with just his pinky finger. Of course. Just completely just, hey, this guy doesn't mean anything to me. Of course. I feel like Luger's already comfortable I agree. in his role. I agree. It's suited so well for him. Yeah, he is comfortable. And is, uh, is already a heat magnet. Yeah. So. Well, fucking middle finger right to his face. Yeah. He didn't even have to do anything. Well, you were at Rumble, you're all like, oh, I hate this guy. And then now he's, a, he's already getting heat. He's doing pretty well for himself after one match. I wouldn't have booked him that way. I oh, wouldn't have booked him that way. Whatever. But, He's going to make millions of dollars here. But it is what it is. Luger, after the match, picks the guy up and kind of does a him. giant swing. Yeah. It's like a half-assed one. And it looked. I thought it looked stupid. And even Bartlett goes, Hey, I've seen that in the Three Stooges once. <laughs> so he even says, Oh, that's stupid. It just seemed random to it do was it. Random. Like, I don't yeah. know why you're discrediting a guy and then feel the need, Oh, hey, exactly. I'm going to pick him up and throw him. Exactly. Um, Exactly. No, the point. I, I do have it noted here, though. I wonder if the character Luger is kind of watered down. Because you have Shawn Michaels and Rick Martel, who are both playing a persona well, of self absorbed. So that's part of the reason why I don't like it. Because I feel like, especially with Shawn, they're yeah. really trying to get that over. Shawn's, yeah, and he's in a high profile situation. That's why, dude, I'm telling you, that's one of the reasons why I don't like it. And I don't think it makes sense. Because, like you said, that's two guys right there that kind of have the same gimmick. Essentially. Yeah. I mean, Martel being, I'm a model. I'm a model. Shawn Michaels being, I'm a sex boy. Right. Now Luger's just, I'm perfect. Yeah, I have a perfect body. Yeah. Yeah. 
So that seems like a lack of creativity, I, I guess. I agree. I agree. But I'm enjoying the Luga part. I mean, Martel, sure, he was at the Rumble, but I don't think he's no, really yeah, on TV it's much. It's not a big deal for him, right? Yeah. Uh, so that... Oh, and then by the end of the show, they re- uh, remind us here that Raw won't be on next week oh because of the dog God. show. I did. I wrote that down. Um, it'll return in two weeks' time due to the dog show. Bartlett says, we just saw a dog show with Luger. <laughs> and I agree with him. We did. Come on. Uh, Macho just goes, bow, wow. <laughs> like, he doesn't know what to say. He's like tuning out. He's, he's just, yeah, just hearing I, things. He's like, all right, here's what I'm going to say. I'll, I'll like, chime in quick. Yeah. Um, but yes, announced for the next Raw is a 16-man over-the-top battle royal and a one-on-one match between Ted DiBiase and Buddha's the Barber Beefcake. How do you feel about the battle royal? I don't. I don't like random battle royals. The only reason I don't like it is probably you'll, you'll agree with me. We just had the, Royal, the Rumble. Royal Rumble. The only battle royal that matters in the year. Yeah. Why? Why already are we doing that? I. That's exactly when I when they announced uh, it. I'm like, we just had this two weeks ago. Not even two weeks. Ago. Literally. So again, a little bit of the lack of creativity there. I think. It's just. It's, I mean, there's got to be serving a point to it. Just, I'm sure it has to set something. Yeah, up. I'm sure. Um, Rob Bartlett even, I think they even tease like, is Rob Bartlett going to be in the battle royal? Well, he he demands his own action figure. Right, and then, well, and then they must have transited. So I remember I just right. wrote it down. Like, oh, maybe yeah, but Bartlett he does will say be in, that. Does yeah, he? he does. What a joke! I hate that guy so much. Um, yeah. So overall, I mean. I would say this was better than last week's show. Absolutely, I agree. Um, sure, you know, the perfect Flair thing. I wonder if people will agree with that. Because Flair Perfect really gets a lot of credit. Praise, um, yeah. But sure, the you know Beefcake promo was, pre- was pretty much a train wreck. Oh, God. Uh, it, like you said, though, you know what? He had the crowd at first, and at first they were into it. And then as soon as he started rattling off more bullshit and kind of getting away from his point of, hey, I'm back, they immediately were done with it. Yeah. Um, and the thing is, I can appreciate it because it's setting up an angle on TV. Sure. It's not just going anywhere. Right, right. Uh, Money Incorporated rebuttal was was fine for was heel good. work. Yeah, so it was good. Kind of got some interest in there. And they're teasing something with Jimmy there. It looks like he doesn't yes. want to mess with it. So Yes. Um, live shows, as I've noted, just a better feel. Mm-hmm. I'm more interested in it. Mm-hmm. And the squash matches this week were effective. I yes. like the Luger squash there and Tatanka. Yeah, even the high energy. High energy with their match. Yeah. Yeah, and Yokozuna. I did. I, I noticed kind of the same stuff. I think there was a nice mix of talents here. Um, we got some guys we haven't seen yet on Raw, like High Energy, Money Inc. Some good, good difference. Good different stuff. Um, again, I was surprised not to see Sean at all. We haven't seen him since the Royal Rumble. That's two weeks now. Yeah. So like, what's going on there? Um, or like, Brett. Oh no, yeah, no Brett either. But we did get like that video that it showed us from. MSG. Yeah, but like, I would think maybe. But you would something. want him on the show. Yeah, yeah. Um, also, no mention, kind of like we went over, no mention of Savage taking care of Repo Man. They kind of just brushed that away. Like, okay, we're done with that. They wanted to forget about that. Yeah, real they quick. wanted to forget about it. Um, it seemed like a lot of stuff was dropped in favor of new angles with like Brutus, Lax and others so like you said they're kind of okay here's some of this stuff that just happened that maybe wasn't so good let's just forget about that and move on like we started some new stuff it seemed kind of rushed for time the whole show um there was no real outside fuckery for once like we got Mm -hmm. matches and they had finishes so that was good which is the best way to get over time i agree i agree um and that's something else I noticed. We got mostly matches and promos without too much filler. Like there wasn't a rumble report and a pre-taped interview outside the arena and like all this BS that Raw's been doing. They definitely, it was meat and potatoes this episode and I think that's why I liked it. No, yeah, I agree. It it, it flew by yeah, for the most part for absolutely. me. So. Um, so last week Raw got a 2.6 okay. with Flair and, and Perfect, which got a... I would I would say a lot of attention right. leading into. Although you said it was a disappointment for a rating. It is. Right. And his by comparison, this week's episode got a 3.0. Wow. Up considerably. Yeah. And it's the feature match is Doink and Typhoon. I wonder really I don't know. I didn't look it up, but I wonder how much press was into Beefcake coming back. 
That's a fair point. Like who knows? Like maybe yeah. people really wanted to see Beefcake. I that's a fair I point. Don't know. That's a fair point. Yeah, that's so weird to me. Because you think on paper, like, okay, so Raw, it's a career versus career match. Ric Flair, Mr. Perfect, compared to, like you said, Typhoon and Doink. Like, what? We're going to watch the perfect match with Ric Flair. You would think. Yeah. So, yeah, that's that's an interesting point. Well, and another thing is, that was a taped show, so I wonder if, I mean, just like today in the internet age... Anything taped, people know the result pretty quickly. Yeah, I know back maybe. then, like, internet wasn't as big or, or anything. maybe the magazines or something. Right, like Dave. You know, yeah. You know, the Observer was probably yeah getting it out there. Sure. I don't know how that works. but Yeah, I don't know. Um, In 93, yeah. Yeah, so. I don't know. I, I feel like Raw is a pretty... It's a solid show so far. Yeah, we're steamrolling ahead. Episode 4, and I ain't tired of watching it, so that's good. Yeah. You compare that to today's... Raw after one episode I don't want to ever watch again. I can't. It's tough. Yeah. It's tough to get through three hours or something. I mean, this is forty five minutes right. without you know commercials edited out, so it's even quicker. Right. So. Right. Um, but I'm I'm enjoying it. Um, Yoko Duggan. Yeah. I'll be intrigued to see how that goes. Yeah. Or at least you know relive it. Right. Here. Um, and uh, I mean, I I kind of like that they're saving interaction between Yoko and Brett. Absolutely. Dragging that out. Yeah, absolutely. So that's pretty good. And now we have a doink with kind of no real, like, we don't know what's going on with him. Like, he's kind of just coasting right now. Well, yeah, they're slow building a lot of feuds. Which is good. Yeah, keeping Crush off TV because you don't want to over overdo it. Right. Because if they're already, you know, we're still two months out of Tillmania. So if exactly. they just burn through it, it's like, well, why the hell am I going to care? Exactly. So I would probably say around March, they'll probably... At start, least on Raw. Like, start starting that. Yeah, up. like interaction. Yeah. And because like, Mania's on the 5th, April 5th. So we'll see how it goes. But yeah, I'm still enjoying it. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. We're getting pretty cool. We're getting inching closer and closer to WrestleMania 9. Yep. Um, Which, just off the top of my head, and kind of what we've gotten announced already by WWF, the card on the surface sounds good. I. I was just Don't thinking, you think? I was thinking that before we started doing this. Uh, WrestleMania 9 is considered one of the worst WrestleManias. Yes. And just I, I was just thinking about the card. I'm like, okay, well we got just just the announced card is, you know, Hart Yoko, Luger Perfect, Gonzalez Taker. Well, that's a shit show, but Yeah, but you're interested in that. Yeah, like, there's oh, there's an angle. Happen. Yeah, there's yeah. there's definitely interest there. Right. Um, but I'm not going to announce what else is on there just to continue on with, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. But I, you, you don't think it'd be a bad show. And I really feel like when we watch it, I don't think we're going to shit on it as much as it has. I agree. And you know what? It's kind of going off on a side thing again. Yeah. The theme, I think, is highly underrated because the visuals for WrestleMania 9 are some of the best, I think, of all time. I like outdoor shows. Outdoor show. Yeah. Yeah. But even with all the Bobby stuff riding the camel back. Oh, yeah. And the, just the visuals of it being an ancient Rome, yeah. quote unquote. I I wish they would do more WrestleMania stuff like that. Because I loved it. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Just I mean, just thinking about it, I, I think there's a lot of quality a- action. I yes. can't think of like a lot of crap. I mean, obviously, <laughs> Taylor Gonzalez is a... We'll get there, Bob. We'll I, know. Get there. I know we will get there. We'll get there. Watch, watch when we get there and I just murder the show. Like, what right. the hell yeah, was I we'll, thinking? Yeah, that we'll, was horrible. I mean, that's another show I haven't watched in years. So yeah, I don't, I I don't know. I don't, I don't remember I don't while either. what really holds up very long. So. Right. You got anything else for episode four? Episode four is in the books. I'm looking at episode five. I'm kind of excited to watch. Is this episode four? I can't remember. Anymore. Yeah, episode four. Okay, you're right. Yeah. I always um, lose count. Well, it's actually, you know what? It's raw four. So it's episode, what, five? Well, because we did the first two in one. Ah, uh, the super first episode. Yeah, yeah so it is shows. Four. Okay, so episode see that. four. You see that? I got you too. Oh, yeah, you're, you're getting me too. You're trying, what are you, trying to slip me up there? Yeah. Make me look like an idiot in front of all of our fans? I just did. Wow. In Canada, Honduras, and United Kingdom, and USA, you look like an idiot. Awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. Couldn't ask for a better co-host. Yeah, I know, man. That's what I'm here for. Ugh. All right, well, I think that wraps it up for episode four. Yep. Uh, as mentioned, you know, you can email us at echopodcast at gmail.com. Find us on Facebook at echopod. And, uh, you know, send your comments along and we'll read them on the air when we get them. 
mm -hmm. when we get there. Mm -hmm. uh, this has been a lot of fun so far, and I appreciate everybody uh, listening. Yeah. So I will close out the show with Austin's favorite theme song. Which would be the Narcissus Lex Luger's. Uh, I thought about doing Steiner's, but they weren't on this show. I hate their theme too. I know. So uh, this is great because you know you're Luger, just trying to kill it. For yeah. Me. yeah. So Luger's, uh, you know, he ended the show in a dominating fashion, and I figured I'd end the show in a dominating fashion myself by having his song fade us out. As much as I disagree, you gotta hear it. Thank you.